All right. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy 2016. Can you believe it's already here? It's crazy how fast 2015 went by. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, this break. How many of you kids are ready to go back to school? No, but we are so excited about 2016 and what God has to, to offer us. I, I want to tell you, it doesn't matter. I, I don't know what your 2015 held for you. I don't know if it was a good year or a bad year. Uh, maybe you went through some tremendous heartache and disappointments. Maybe maybe you entered into some new exciting seasons of life. I, I don't know, but I can tell you this. No matter what it was, good or bad, I want to tell you that 2016 is going to be your year. And I believe with all my heart that God wants to position you uh, to see incredible things happen for His glory. He wants to just, I mean, get past just scratching the surface and really see amazing things unfold in your life this year. And so we're launching this uh, new series, Fresh Start. We're really excited about it. And um, we've got a lot of great messages to bring you in the next few weeks. But today... Uh, we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to treat you. We have a very, very special treat for you, and that is that we are not going to be speaking and bringing the word today. What are we going to be doing? That's right. Some of you guys know Miss Brandy Keith. She's one of our life group pastors, one of our life group leaders. And today she's going to kick off our new series, Fresh Start, with part one. Give it up for Brandy. Give it up for Miss Brandy. Well, thank you guys. It's great to be here. And I just want to welcome everybody and I welcome our online family. I'm very, very excited to kick off 2016. How many of you are freaked out that it's 2016? <laughs> I know, it's kind of weird. Like I'm really kind of worried about like going somewhere like formal, like you have to write a check or something and I have to write 2016. This is going to throw me off. Kids, what do you think? It's going to throw you off? It's going to throw me off. So when we talk about this new year, you know, you always think about all these things that the new year brings. So when you say, like, the new year, what do you think of? What's, like, the very first thing that you think of when you say, you know, hey, we're going to bring in the new year? Well, mine is, like, cheese balls. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Like, I was thinking about this, and this is stuck in my mind. Cheese balls. And you're like, you're so weird. I know, I am weird. But, you know, it's crazy to say I was at school with the kids. And you know how we dropped the ball in New York City? Well, you know, in Wisconsin, they dropped this ginormous cheese thing. And it's like huge, and it's just a piece of cheese that drops, you know, just like the ball. Well, then I found out that there's other places, you know, like Florida drops an orange, and then like Idaho drops a potato, and you know, so there's all these different things. But all I keep thinking about is the ginormous cheese thing, so I just cooked on cheese. And so it's kind of funny because when we went to our New Year's party, you know, with our family, everything was cheese. That, you, you don't understand. Everything was cheese. Like, we went to have a meal, and, like, everything was cheese. Like, we had cheese dip, because no good party does not have cheese dip. And then we had, like, sliced cheese with, like, the little sausage, you know, that probably had cheese in it. I didn't eat it, but it, you know, probably had cheese in it. But then, you know, then it had, like, those other, like, uh, cheese dippers, you know, like the big, you know, cheese ball thing that has, like, the awesome, you know, almonds on it and stuff, and then you eat that with crackers. It was a lot of cheese. I'm just going to have to say that cheese was the word because I think a little of our family got sick on the cheese <laughs> this summer, this, this holiday season. It was crazy. I think my husband ended up sick the next day. I think Missy and Brad are a little under the weather, maybe Ty, a little bit of their family. So cheese was the word this new year. But I don't know what your uh, word is for this new year. A lot of people think about resolutions, right? We all think about what are we going to do in 2016 that's going to make it awesome, make it better than last year, not the same, a little bit different. How many of you have a New Year's resolution? No. Wow. You just thought, I'm not even going to do that. I've seen my last year list. I'm not even going to go there. Well, how many of you made a last year list? Okay. A few ambitious people. All right. Awesome. Okay, well, hey, be honest with me. If you took out your last year's list and you looked at this year's list, how do they compare? You know, if you were really honest, do they maybe look a little the same? No. Awesome. Well, sometimes we can look at those things and think, last year I kicked off the year and I wanted to do this. I wanted to get better at not stressing. And so this year I say, what was your list? And you're saying, well, it was not stressing. And so it's kind of the same. And you're like, well, last year started off good. See, I told myself I wasn't going to stress. And I did good for like a little bit. And then I started thinking about not stressing. 
and I got a little nervous. And then I brought it up again today, and you're like, well, thanks a lot, because you're helping me out a lot. I said I wasn't going to stress. Now I'm so freaked out about stressing that I can't stop stressing. You know? Like you have little problems. How many of us have problems? Right? I know, right? I, I, I got some problems. But, you know, how many of you would like to say, this year really is going to be different? Like you're really thinking, this year is going to be the different year. It's going to be different. I'm praying that for myself because I got some problems. But, you know, I know another guy that had some problems, maybe a little bit of issues, and I don't know anybody that needed a fresh start like the story of Joseph. How many of you are familiar with that story, Joseph? I don't think anybody's not heard that story, but here in a minute, you're going to be real familiar, so we're just going to kind of go over the story of Joseph. I'm going to give you a small recap about the story of Joseph. He was like one of the youngest of 12, okay? He had 12 siblings. And this guy, you know, his, his dad kind of favored him. You guys, parents, that's not a good idea. Don't favor one simply out of the other. It's just not a good idea. But, you know, as his older brothers were out working, you know, Joseph, his dad fell to back and he said, hey, you know, I want to teach you some trades. I want to teach you how to read some scrolls. I'm going to educate you. I'm going to teach you how to read. And his brothers were like, yeah, Joseph doesn't even have to go out and work. You know, yeah. And so Joseph is not maybe the brightest character yet, okay? He's a little cocky. He's like, hey, man, I'm smart. I'm learning. I'm getting some good stuff going in here. He's so... You know, this, this kind of happened where he had, you know, some good things going. He had a good relationship with his family. He had a good job because he didn't have to go out in the sun and work. He just, like, played up and, you know, got educated and, and stuff. And he had good things happen. And then all of a sudden, God started intervening in his life and started giving him some dreams. I mean, you got some dreams. I got some dreams. I got some dreams. And so did Joseph. And, and God started giving Joseph these dreams. And, you know, craziest thing. You know, it's not always the wisest thing to go out and run and tell everybody your dreams right off the bat, you know? It's like you got these New Year res resolutions and you're like, hey, guess what I'm going to do? And they're like, you're crazy. You're nuts. So the first story or first little tidbit that I'll give you about Joseph is he didn't really get that yet, that he wasn't supposed to go and blab his dreams yet. One time. But he went out and he said, hey, man, I had some dreams. You know, brothers, come here. Dad, mom, come here. I had these dreams. Man, you will not even believe this. I had this dream that, like, you guys all bowed to me. And that his brothers didn't already think he was a nutcase. They were like, you have lost your mind. We are the oldest. We are not bowing to you. How many of you have older siblings? Now, if your younger sibling came to you and said, hey, you are going to be under me one day. I'm just telling you. I'm going to win. It's going to be me. I know they say that because my youngest tries to win all the time. You know, they do their wrestling moves, you know, where they swoop into the side. And, you know, he always tries to get that first move in there, but he always gets taken down by the older brother, right? He's like, yeah, right. Come back another day. You know, come back and see me when you get bigger. But Joseph, no, he's get, getting the cat out of the bag. He's like, man, you are going to bow to me. And so even his dad was like, hey, back up, dude. You're probably not there yet. You don't really need to be speaking that. So anyway, so going back to the story of Joseph, you know, he had a good job. He didn't have no manual labor. He had a good family. He had everything going his ways. But how many of you can say that? You know, I, I got some good things going. And you know, I got saved or I got a good job. I got my good family. Man, God is moving. God is working in my life. God has even given me some dreams. You know? But you know, as sure as I stand here today, guess what happened? Some troubles arose. Yeah? And so, you know the story of Joseph. You know there were some big troubles. But so just so we make it a good story. Man, some troubles arose. Right? How many of you have had some challenges arise before you? Yeah. Maybe you had them in 2015. And maybe they're still kind of on the brink of entering in 2016. But you're thinking, how is it going to be different this year, Lord? I'm really thinking it's going to be different. But, you know, I just, I want to go into this. You know, Joseph just... Man, he, he really needed a fresh start right now before they ever started. You know, it didn't happen. So he had some problems, you know. Well, his problem was that his uh, brothers got sick of him and decided, well, well, we'll just kick him in the cistern, this old well, and we'll just leave him for dead. That's some problems, isn't it? I mean, that's some rough problems. How many of you have been betrayed before? That's some rough problems, isn't it? That's some real problems. And you know that, you know, his older brother planned on rescuing him, but you know what? The older brothers, they were like, no, let's just go ahead and let this guy go. We're not, we don't need him. And so, anyway, lo and behold to Joseph, he's thinking, well, you know, maybe they'll get over it. And all of a sudden, a rope came down in the cistern, you know. A rope came down, and you're thinking, ah, I knew you'd come for me. I knew you'd come back for me. And so, here he goes up the rope, comes up, gets out, and he's like, wait a minute. 
You're not my brothers. Who are you? And lo and behold, it was uh, some Ishmaelites that were passing by, and they were buying slaves. And you could see his brothers off in the distance, and he's like, hey, hey, brothers, hey, thanks for coming, man. They're trying to take me away. Come save me. And his brothers were like, see ya. We don't really want a part of you right now. We got some good cash for you, so we're going to let you mosey on your way. And so, yeah, Joseph has found himself in some big trouble now. He ain't got some problems. He's got some major problems. He's being hauled away by these weird people that he doesn't know, and his brothers are watching it happen. Had some problems, didn't it? You ever been turned against? You ever had some problems? Joseph had some problems. You know, it's crazy. You know, when we think that they are getting better, maybe maybe in 2015 you're thinking, okay, it's getting better, it's getting better. Oh, man, the bottom just dropped out. It fell out. Like, there's no bottom left. Like, it's bad. It, I'm not getting delivered. You know, he th thought the rope was coming out and delivered. No, it, it's, it's bad because it's getting worse. And so, that was the Joseph story there. You know, um... I just wonder how many of you are thinking, you know, maybe that you've had um, some things and you're thinking, why is this year going to be different? You know, Lord, what is it that's going to be different in this year that I know that things are going to be different? And I just want to ask you this question. Hopefully you're asking that question in your own personal life because I know we all got junk. We've all got issues. We've all got challenges. We've all got something, whether it's stress or whatever it is, we know that God wants to do something greater in 2016. That's why we make those New Year's resolutions, right? Yeah. It's got something different. So I just want to pose a question to you this morning as you're asking, God, how's it going to be different for this year? And I just want to pose this question. I wonder if God sometimes allows the barriers in our life to see if we'll push through. You know? I wonder if sometimes God allows a roadblock to come up in your way to say, do you really want by? I wonder if he says, you know what, are you just going to stop and admire the sign? Or are you going to press through? So I want to show you this picture. You know, you can see the do not enter sign, and that's, we should obey the laws. I'm not saying we should not. <laughs> but you know, you can kind of see in the distance, it's kind of a pretty picture back there. You know, kind of capturing you to think, hmm, I wonder what's past that sign. You ever think about that? You come up against some challenges, and you're thinking, I wonder, is this really what God has for me? I mean, how in the world? How did I come this far? And God doesn't want me to go past this. Do not pass. I wonder if God allows the barriers in our life to be an opportunity to press through. Okay, so in, in 2016, as we think about this, I want to kind of put it in perspective. How many of you are math students in here? A few of the kids. Awesome. Hey, got some boys back here. Awesome. So we're going to kind of go over some basic math. I know there's more in here, so we're just going to get some answers. You guys throw them out to me if you can. So we're going to throw up some math questions. Two plus one is? Three. Three. Awesome. I know we have some math people. Five minus two is? Three. Oh, my goodness. Look at you guys. Awesome. Okay. So, and then one other thing. What is the symbol right here? Multiplication. Multiplication. Yes. And how many of you know, let's get to the advanced math students, okay? How many of you know what the, the answer of a multiplication pro uh, problem is called? The product. Man, look at these guys down here. What grade are you guys in? Awesome. Okay, yeah, the product. It's the product, yeah. And so, it's a crazy thing. If you stop at the problem, you will never get the product, right? And so that's what you know, I want to post to you guys this morning. If you guys had homework and your teacher said, man, you guys should really do your homework. You should get the answers and product to this. And you're going, I don't want to. You're not going to get a very good grade, are you? You're not going to get a very good grade. But you know what? That's kind of what God asks us to do sometimes. Sometimes he says, hey, I've got this project for you. I've got this homework for you, per se. I've got this opportunity for you. Yeah, it may be presented in a challenge, but I've got this opportunity for you, and I'm just asking you, do you want the product? Because, see, you won't ever get the product if you don't solve the problem, right? You know, so often we get held up in our problems. How many times do we worry so much about our problems, but we don't see a way past them? We just can't see a way through our problems. 
We're thinking, how is this going to be different this year, Lord? Because every year has been the same. I've had the same problems. I'm just challenged with, with this problem. You know, so I just want to go back to the story of Joseph, and I, I just think about, you know, how many problems he had in this in this life that he walked, you know. But you know what? He never quit. He never gave up. He never stopped. Even though I think I would have probably cried and like found me a hole to dig, you know. Like I'd have just kind of quit. But I just want to pose this question. You'll never get to the destiny that you were made for if you allow the problems to stop you. You'll never get to the destiny that you were made for. Every single one of you have a destiny and a place. You'll never get to that place if you allow yourself to be stopped by your problems. Do you realize your problems allow you to press through to find the answer? Do you realize your problems are just an opportunity for God to show you who He is through those problems? Do you realize it's an opportunity for you to press through them? I want to show you this. I want to really... Um, kind of just answer this question to you. How is it going to be different for me this year? How is this year going to be different? How is it going to be different for me? And I just want to um, share this proverb with you. You know, proverb is the, the book of wisdom. So if you need wisdom, God says to ask and I'll give it to you liberally. But the book of Proverbs is where you go if you need wisdom. And I just want you guys to look at this. Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, and the NLT version that says this. And it says, my child... God says, my child, because he loves you. And he adores you. And he says, my child, listen to what I say. Okay, just listen. Listen. You got some problems? Listen to me. Listen to what I say. Treasure my commands. Everything I say, treasure them. It says, tune your ears to wisdom. Okay, and concentrate on understanding. Just try to understand me for a minute, okay? This is me and God talking, okay? Baby girl, Mr. Man, just listen to me for a second. And it says, cry out for insight. That's the things that you can't see. And it says, and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. How many of you would search for silver with all of your might, right? You'd be out there till dark and daylight and all hours. You'd be looking for that. You'd be seeking them like hidden treasures. Hidden treasures. It says, then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain the knowledge of God. Um, if you don't mind writing in your Bible, so often like we say, I want you guys to um, circle a few things, and I want you guys to circle these things if you'll pass it on by. I want you to circle tune. Because there's a, there's a tuning there that has to happen. There has to be a place in your heart where you say, man, I'm giving it to you. I'm going to concentrate on what you're trying to say. I'm going to get into your word. I'm really going to try to understand what you're trying to tell me about this problem, this challenge that I've got. I'm going to cry out to you because I don't got nothing else. So I'm just going to cry out to you. And then I'm going to ask you. I may ask you repeatedly. I might ask you 50 times. But I'm going to ask you again and then I'm going to search. God, what is it that you're going to put in my path that's going to help me? I'm going to search you out and then I'm going to seek you for all you are. You know, so often we look to self-help clues and tips and all this stuff. And we don't stop and ask God. He has all the wisdom and the counsel that you'll ever need. And your destiny is wrapped up in God. And so often we look to self-help things and we set these great goals, but you know what? None of those accomplish anything without God. You can't even reach those things without God. And so many times we don't stop to seek Him. We don't tune ourselves. We don't concentrate on what He's trying to tell us. We don't cry out to Him, the one that can do everything for us. We don't ask Him. We don't even search for Him. Why not? When He has the answer, He has that beautiful picture past that sign, and He wants you to just ask Him. You know, um, I was going to show you a story of Joseph. I, I think I'll have to um, pass that by today. But um, you guys go and YouTube it, the story of Joseph, and you'll see the many roads that he traveled. I mean, he went not only from that, that place where he got sold into slavery, but he got into a Potiphar's house, you know, and he started getting elevated. But you know what? Got thrown into prison for a crime he didn't even commit. How many of you have been there where you're like, got some injustice going on, and no one sees it. No one's really seen it. And you're thinking, God, what is up? What's going to happen? You know, great thing happened to Joseph, and this can happen to you too. Okay? Joseph became a man of integrity. And you know what? He became a well-developed inner life. It's, it's like whatever he did in public was what he did in private. Nobody was there in the prison when, he, when, they, when they were there. And to see whether or not Joseph was going to praise God or whether he was going to, like, see God out for this, or anything. God could have cursed God and died. You know, Joseph, or Joseph could have cursed God and died, you know. But Joseph didn't do that. He decided, man, 
you know what? I've cried out for you, Lord. I've actually stopped, but you said to keep going. Because all I'm going to do is die in this situation if I don't do anything else, you know. I'm in this prison. I don't, I'm don't. i not getting out. I've tried that. You know, they keep throwing me back here. I'm not getting out. So I might as well do it your way. So Joseph began to cry out and seek for God. And you know what? He just decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to be faithful where you put me right now. I don't care what I'm doing right now, but I'm just going to try to work on this thing that I've got an issue with right now. Whatever my problem is. You know, you need to, to look to God, get some help, self-help stuff, whatever that is. There's a place and time for that. You know what Joseph decided to do? Is he decided to be a man of integrity. A well-developed inner life. Do you know that doesn't come by quitting? Do you know that wisdom doesn't come in a day? Wisdom is developed over time. You know, so often we want it now. We want this thing to be different. We want it to be now. You know, that's not God's way. Because if he told you everything right now, you wouldn't be able to handle it anyway. You know? He wants you to be that well-developed inner life. That well-refined wisdom. And that only comes by time. And you know what? It may not be your time. And you may get real frustrated. And you may be thinking, I'm out. You know what? If you'll stick it out with God, he'll make you higher. You know, it says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and at the right time, He will lift you up in honor. You know, not only will He lift you up, but He will lift you up in honor. It's enough that God would just lift you up, right? But He said, I'll lift you up in honor. And you know, if you look at the story of Joseph, that's exactly what God did with Joseph. He not only lifted him up out of that prison, because Joseph decided to do what was right when no one was looking. He decided to take that time and develop some aspects that he never would have developed otherwise. He decided to take that time in prison and be faithful with the time that he was given. And you know what? In, in prison, he ended up being in charge of the inmates. Being in charge of the prison. What is that? See, God was working on him then. Because, see, his destiny was wrapped up in that. Because God had a bigger place for him to be. See, because if he wouldn't have been faithful in the prison time, guess what? You know the end of the story. He couldn't have ever got moved up into the palace. You know, the thing is, is like when Joseph got to the palace, he would have never been ready had he quit. He'd have never been ready had he just said, man, this is too much for me. I, just, I see the sign. I, I know. Right here is where I stop. No, that's not what God had planned. God had put every roadblock in his path, and Joseph made a choice. Hey, I'm going to be faithful with what I've been given right now, and I'm going to wait for you to move this sign. Amen? Yeah. You know what? God, God changed Joseph into that cocky little, little boy into a man of integrity that was a well-developed inner life, and that can only happen through time, and that can only happen through Jesus Christ. It can only happen in you as you allow to give your life over to Him, even in the tough stuff, and allow yourself to be faithful with those times. And you know what? Joseph was ready for the palace because he couldn't have managed the palace if he wouldn't have managed the prison times. Thank you. Awesome. What a powerful word uh, to spring for us into 2016. I love it. One of the things that she said that stood out to me was, you know, there's a reason why um, God puts a barrier in front of us, and that's to allow us the opportunity to push through it. And, uh, and it's so true, you know, when you think about that. How many times do we come upon challenge after challenge after challenge, and our heart, our mind, our flesh says, I just want to quit. I just want to give up. But do you not realize that God is trying to produce patience and perseverance and wisdom in your life so that He can stretch you, He can grow you, and He can prepare you for a more powerful future. And that's what He's wanting to do this year with you. What, what a great work. What a great work. Amen. You know, so, so often we focus on the problems, just like Randy was talking about. And God wants to groom you and He wants to grow you through them. If you would stand with us this morning, we have such an awesome opportunity as we launch into a new year, right? I told Brad, this year I didn't do a resolution because I have resolved that every day I want to get better. And so when she said that, I didn't raise my hand because I think to myself, so often we set ourselves up for failure because we look at like Monday is the new beginning or the new year is the new beginning. But you know what? With God, the Bible says that um, it's new every morning. Every single morning. So you may be going through some hard times right now, but guess what? This morning you can have your fresh start. If you would bow your heads with us this morning, we want to pray for you. Father God, thank you, Jesus.
God, I thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of problems and challenges, Father God, you still give us hope. God, I know in a room this size, God, that there are people, Father God, and watching online who are going through some really, really difficult things right now. God, and I know that they may not even be able to talk about it or be able to voice it, God, but there's inner turmoil going on. Lord, and I pray right now that you would begin right now as we launch into this new year to help them to see, God, that they can have a fresh start in you. God, I pray that no matter what the problems, God, that we would see the potential if we'll just break through that barrier with you. God, we just ask right now, Lord, for families, God, to be restored in Jesus' name in 2016. God, we pray that lost loved ones would come to you, Jesus. Husbands and wives that don't know you, Father God, that they would be brought in to your kingdom, Father God. This year, God, as Kathy was mentioning, God, that we would not give up hope. God, for those loved ones, Lord, who have strayed, but God, that we would stand and we would believe and we would fast. God, we would watch you move this year. God, we are so thankful. Maybe you're in this room this morning and you would say, you know what? My fresh start needs to be a relationship with God because in the last year, I have completely strayed away or maybe I have never, ever accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I want you to know that that's the first place that you start. You're never going to be able to get through your problems if you don't allow Jesus Christ to be the center of your life. So this morning, we want to give you that opportunity to accept Jesus Christ and not just Accept Him as a one-time thing, but to every day say, God, I want to grow in a relationship with you. I want more than anything else, God, to surrender my life and let you have control. So this morning, we want to give that opportunity to you. It's as easy as it is. It's as easy as admitting that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. The Bible says that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Not one of us deserves God's grace. for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.